everybody, I am with Julian Smith. I had such a wonderful opportunity to meet this uh, fellow I've admired for a long time here in Montreal. And I was part of an event with him yesterday. And uh, so now we've got a chance to bring his wisdom to the GROW audience. Julian, one of the really interesting things you said yesterday was the, the best way to cut through the clutter of the content density of our world is to get drunk, very drunk, get the craziest idea you can, uh, go for it, write about it, and it works. That will cut through the clutter. So, but, the, but, but the main idea here is you've got to be on the, the edge of thinking, really. So mm -hmm. tell, tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, it's, it's, it's about cumulative advantage. Uh, the problem is, is that everyone is, and a lot of this, the way that people are growing websites, they're growing with the 1% per month strategy, which is, I'll just keep going and going and going. Uh -huh. And they get a lot of that from people like Seth Godin, because uh -huh. he's amazing at that. Mm -hmm. And he's been doing that for so long. But also, he can do that because he's written 12 bestsellers and sold a company to Yahoo and all these other yeah. things. Right? So 1% on a huge base is still yeah, huge. One, it's still huge. But, yeah. Uh, but with the competition that's going on in like content and all these things, it's, it's not enough. So you need to go out and do, it doesn't have to be crazy, it just has to be, you have to push your content to an edge that most people will not push it to. Yeah. And that can mean a lot of things depending yeah. on where you're from, yeah. but that will give you a, such a, instead of this 1%, then they'll just be like, hey, in, my, in my case, that's what happened. So yeah. Every time I hit one of those things, yeah. Boom. Yeah, I mean, Godin wrote something, wrote about that in his in his new book. Something about you know you have to go to the places where you fear, right. where you fear. Now yeah. you've you've got a, a, a book out where you kind of explore that. It's this idea of of, of kind of following your flinch. We just had a wonderful uh, meal at a cafe when we were talking about is that finding that internal trigger. So tell tell us about fl the the flinch idea. Uh, Flinch is a book that I wrote, it was edited by Seth Godin uh, two years ago, and it's, uh, you can go to Amazon, just type Flinch in and you'll see it there. Uh, and the book essentially is about realizing or recognizing those moments where you flinch psychologically before doing something. The way we talk about it is like, oh, I'm about to edit a post, and, and if I don't, I don't want to press post because I don't know what the reaction will be, or, or I don't want to talk to that person because I don't know how they'll what they'll think of me. Uh, in fact, that re reaction, uh, people naturally flinch back. But the yeah. book is about flinching forward. Wow! And how yeah. to process that yeah. and, uh, and the result that it has in your life. Really short book, and uh, and that's what it's about. And what the results of that decision. It's an important idea because, and it's something I struggle with because it, it's, it, it's scary to go there and, and put yourself out there and, and maybe even expose yourself to, to uh, conflict. How do you stay centered in that world? I mean, you know, psychologically, when you, when, you, when you follow that flinch and you expose yourself to, the, to negativity, negativity how, how, do, how do you personally stay centered in that world? I mean, the. I, I have a lot of different ways that I do it, but I'll tell you that they have this great, uh, I think I learned it from somebody else. They, they got the 10-10-10 the rule, which is amazing, very easy rule. Uh -huh. It's like, I am about to do something that might be stupid. <laughs> uh, 10 minutes later, how am I gonna feel about that? So it's almost like positioning yourself in the future. Mm. Uh, 10 minute, minutes from now, how am I gonna feel about that? Then 10 hours from now, how am I gonna feel about it? And then 10 years from now, how am I gonna and by, mm -hmm. by positioning yourself in the future in those three different times, yeah. almost everything is insignificant after 10 years. Yeah. So um, it just allows you to put things in perspective. Your reptile brain on the back, as you would call it, uh, is saying to you, no, 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 because it thinks you're going to die. It actually does think you're going to die. So, uh, and with reason, because at the time, you know, millions of years ago, we died from all kinds of things. Now we don't. So we need to change the way that our stance towards towards most actions and realize that our instincts are usually wrong. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, you are embarking, you are certainly following your flinch. 
with your new startup company called Breather, which is quite a fascinating venture. So tell us a little bit your, about this big idea. Uh, okay. You're risking it all. It's so, it's, so, it's so big sometimes, hard for me to talk about. But fundamentally, Breather is on-demand space, or it's peace and quiet on-demand. So uh, city of noisy, but more importantly, it's hard to find a place that to call your own. And so what Breather does is it finds excess space in cities and then allows you to literally unlock that space with your phone at any time. So you're walking down Broadway in Manhattan and you're like, I got two hours between meetings. You can just go to your phone, press a button, it will reserve a room for you, probably a block away, and then you can go into that room, use it. It's always clean and it's always safe. And um, you can use it like your own home or office. You can take a nap or work. Mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And then when you leave, we just refresh the room, clean everything up, and then someone else. So awesome. it's almost taking the sharing economy to like a really crazy extreme. Yeah. But uh, it's what I believe is an inevitable idea that has to transform cities in the future. And uh, what what can people expect as far as uh, when this is going to roll out and when we'll be able to start using this service? So we actually prototype it right now. In the next 15 days, we'll have a room here. And then in the next few months, we'll here being Montreal, here, yeah, we're, which is where we're working yeah. out of right now. Uh -huh. And uh, and in New York City, around October, there'll be a few rooms that will be available to a, a private small beta group. And then as time goes on, we'll just roll it out, and uh, more rooms will become available. And you'll just be able to. It'll be something that when you go to a city that doesn't have this, you'll start thinking, and the city is backwards. I have nowhere to go. <laughs> uh, that's the goal to make it so natural that you can't think of living without it. Now, uh, I can imagine this is taking a lot of time and energy. Are, are you, do you have any uh, writing projects in the works, digital projects in the works that we I, know about? I keep my blog updated. Yeah. Uh, in the, at the moment, uh, with books, I mean, you can write a book every five years, still be a, a decent author. Uh -huh. So this is nice in between time. Uh, me and Rogan, uh, my co-author, just yeah. published. Yeah, I've heard of him. Heard, I heard of him. Yeah, he's the guy that some people know. Yeah. And uh, and so we got some time. We're good. Oh, good. Well, Julian Smith, I regard one of the great intellects of of, of, of the web, uh, a, a profound uh, thinker. He's a he is a, a person that certainly has uh, his opinions and lets them be known. Uh, Julian, tell us where people can find you on the web, your blog, your books, and and breather. Uh, my blog is at inoveryourhead.net, and uh, Breather is breather.com, so you can just go there and sign up, and when it becomes available in your city, we'll let you know. Well, best of luck with everything, and, and thanks for being with us today.